European Union rules on data usage. The companies will be banned from using any data from business uh, to compete with them or from treating their own services more favorably. And you know at home, Facebook is facing an antitrust lawsuit from the DOJ. What impact will all of this have, do you think, on these big tech stocks where we continue to see money moving into tech? Yeah, it's a great point, Maria. And you don't need a weatherman to know which way the wind blows. And clearly, regulations coming their way and obviously get, uh, gathering data, their competitive advantages are going to start getting eroded, especially with some regulation. Now, where this can be really, really dangerous is if you look at retail investors specifically, they all own the S&P 500. In fact, we've seen 30 billion go into S&P 500 index funds this year. And the reality of it is it's all driven by big tech. So, you know, I've joked that the S&P has become a tech fund and drag. It's about 40 percent tech now when you factor Amazon in there as well. So I think the problem here is if you're looking at that reopening of the economy, we've talked a lot about this. I'm very bullish on the reopening of the economy. Buying the S&P 500, because you're buying 500 stocks, you think you're actually participating in that trade, but you're really not because those big mega cap tech companies are something like 22, 23 percent of the overall index. And it makes matters worth Worse, rather, Tesla is going to be basically sold into this index at the highest price possible when Wall Street basically unloads it on the index come next week, which is going to be like another 80 billion that has to get bought. Basically, Tesla at the highest price you could possibly buy it being put into the index. So I think it's, you have to be really careful mm. as an investor right now. You have to diversify your money. And I see this all the time. And we probably look at like, I don't know, maybe 50 portfolios a month. And most retail investors are overweighted in tech stocks and overweight in the S&P 500. And you've got to really diversify right now if you want to participate in the reopening of the economy. Yeah, and I think this is a really good point. Uh, and in that same vein, when you know where the wind is blowing, would you buy ch indexes that hold Chinese stocks right now, knowing the executive order that the president is putting down to ensure that the U.S. is not funding the growth of China's military through buying these Chinese companies that are tied to the Chinese Communist Party military? Um, I'm going to go on a limb here and say yes. I think you have to have a global portfolio right now. I think you can't ignore China with 1.4 billion people, and it's really hard to get around it. I mean, everyone benefits from the fact that we're all selling to China, whether in, you're in the U.S., you're in Europe. And at the end of the day, their growth rates are faster, even if they're not exactly accurate, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, and if you look at well, valuations— everyone benefits. Over you say everyone benefits except those companies that are getting their data stolen. Uh, Microsoft says it costs tens of billions of dollars because 90 percent of the people in China use the Microsoft operating system and only 1 percent pay for it. So I don't know that there's a lot of benefit there to the companies that are getting robbed.